Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the IBGP and EBGP and I'll give you an example and show you how it works. Okay, so let's consider this example over here. So I have multiple routers. Let's say uh, R6 is part of, you know, uh, CE1. R8 is part of CE2. R5 is part of CE3 and this is part of CE4 okay now R6 is AS100 R8 is AS400 R7 is AS600 and R5 is AS300 and I have AS200 running over here okay now now first let's see okay let's talk about EBGP EBGP is the most simpler concept to explain over here um, so I have a route called a prefix 80008 which is being advertised by CE2 now this information needs to be shared with everyone on the internet so that they can reach this particular host right this, they can reach this particular they can try to communicate with this particular IP address okay so what happens as I told you TCP connection will be formed between R8 and R2 because both will be configured over here with EBGP by EBGP because they are part of different AS one R8 is part of AS400 and R2 is part of AS200. Okay, so over here I'll have to form an EBGP connection. Okay, EBGP connection. So how will I form EBGP connection is I'll basically configure both R8 and R2 with EBGP configuration saying that you know uh, uh, the neighbor for on R8 would be let's say R2's IP address. Okay which is facing this side. So let's say if this is part of 8000 is hosted behind R8 and this is part of 8000 slash 8 network. So R2 is 80002 and the remote is, is 200, right? So this information is updated in the open message packet and it's sent to uh, R2 once the TCP connection is formed and then they will agree on the BGP version and they'll see that the AS400 is trying to form a peering with AS200 so it's an EBGP protocol and yeah so once this configuration is done then all this uh, messages are exchanged and the state is going to establish once the state is established the route 8008 along with its route attributes it's exchanged is sent to R2 okay so what will R2 see R2 will see that route 8000 slash 8 is received via R8 with AS path. AS path is what? 400. Right? I told you, right? Once it sends a packet out, uh, it will prepend its AS path. Okay? So now if AS200 has to send this part to AS300, then it will put its own AS path 200 comma 400 and then send it out to 300. It will always prepend. Okay, prepend means adding it in the front. Okay. So this is how EBGP neighborship is formed. Okay. So similarly, over here also you have an EBGP neighborship. Okay. Once you configure both on R6 and R8, EBGP will run. Over here as well, you have EBGP. EBGP and over here as well you have ebgp okay so basically the ibgp all the routers in the as200 let's say it's configured with ibgp okay we'll talk about it so all the information of as okay so let's see this as400 route right a008 should be there with uh, ce1 which is r6 it should be with r7 it should be with r five as well okay because all of them should be able to communicate with 8008 network right so once r2 receives this it's the r2's job to forward this information to all the other devices um, in the ibgp network to be able to learn this route and also forward it to the other ebgp routes they are connected to okay now this we'll see in how this works we'll see in uh, the when we configure the IBGP and how IBGP works when I show you that. Okay. So let me just erase this part. Okay. So it's a little more clear. I think 
now we'll see mm, yes 400 okay can be removed okay this is c2 ebgp is fine okay and ebgp over here ebgp over here okay yeah so now let's say ce3 or r5 okay has around 5000 slash 8 okay r3 will receive 5.0.0.0 slash 8 via r5 and it will have the as path as 300 okay makes sense so whenever an ebgp peering is formed it sees that the peer is ebgp it will prepend its as path and send it to the device okay to the other ebgp router which is r3 so r3 is now configured with ebgp on this side okay towards the r5 and now this information has to be sent to r8 it has to be sent to r6 it has to be sent to r4 okay r7 so to all the different autonomous systems okay this has to be learned by everyone right so obviously we know that you know there is an ebgp configured with uh, r2 right r2 and r8 okay there is ebgp configured between r6 and r1 and there is ebgp configured with r4 and r7 okay and also remember i told you that we have to form a full mesh topology within ibgp now there are two reasons for it okay now let's see let's say i forward this path r3 i form an ibgp neighborship between uh, r2 and r3 okay over here i form ibgp okay so now this path 5008 will needs to be sent to r2 okay so 5.0.0.0 slash 8 okay is received with as path of so as path has to be prepended correct it has to be prepared with what 200 correct 200 its own as path comma 300 okay now as i mentioned the first thing the r2 when it receives it will check the as path for loops okay it will check if its as number is present in the as path sequence so r2 belongs to as 200 it will see that as 200 is already present in the as path sequence so there is a loop so if there is a loop what will it do it will drop the packet and this packet will not be forwarded out onto the ebgp router towards r8 right correct so that's why what we do is first rule is we do not prepend as path if it is being sent out towards ibgp router okay so this path will always receive with only as path 300 since it's an ibgp peer it will not send out it will not prepend the uh, the as path okay so it will be only sent with 300 okay now what will r2 do okay r2 has received this path right now r2 is going to send this path out on ebgp towards r8 with 50008 slash 8 with all of its attributes and the as path would be 200 comma 300 make sense okay so as 400 will now have this will have would have learned this 500 network okay with the following as path and it will have all the attributes as well okay so this works correctly now this information also has to go to r6 and r7 right r6 and r7 as 500 and as 100 so what 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 will this particular router do now r2 this goes this go, okay this uh the 500 route which is learned from r3 will come to r2 r2 will send it over here r1 will receive it r1 will send it over here and then r1 will also send it over here right there is no reason why r2 should not r1 should not send it over here r3 which is which is over here will also send it over here now what happened there is a loop which has been formed correct right this is also received from here also this is also received from here also correct and this once received from here will also go this side also and then it will also come again this side also now there is a continuous loop being formed over here right so that's when we came up with the second rule okay the first one is you always prepend the as path when it is going towards ebgp peer okay otherwise you don't prepend the as path the second thing is the path which is received from an ibgp peer will only be sent 
out to an eBGP peer. It will not be sent to any other IBGP peer in order to prevent loops. Okay. So we don't send from R2 to R1. Okay. So that's why we have to form a full mesh topology. So basically what R3 has to do, R3 has to send out or uh, towards R2. It has to send out towards R4 and it has to send out towards R1. So it has to form three IBGP neighborships between these two devices, R3 and R4, R3 and R1, R1 and R2. Okay. Now R1 and R2 it formed with R3 and R4 also it will form one. Okay. It's directly connected interface. So it will also send with uh, the same thing 5000 slash 8 uh, with AS part of 300. And once this goes out uh, to R7, it will send with uh, AS path as 200 comma 300 for 5000 slash 8. Okay. Now R8 already received it. How will R6 receive it? Now let's say there is no direct connection formed between R1 and R3. Okay. If we cannot form a physical direct physical connection, it is okay. We don't have to worry about it. What we can do is we can run a underlying routing protocol. Let's say I'm using RIP over here. I can also use OSPF in order to be able to ping this interface from this interface. Okay. So these two should be reachable or in general, what we do is we form the BGP peering. Okay. With the router ID or the loopback address. Okay. So in case if this also, if this interface goes down, then we are able to communicate through this direction. Okay. From R3 to R4, R2 to R4 to R1. Okay. So we use a loopback address, which is a logical interface, which is not bound to any interface. Okay. So even if this particular link goes down, then we can use a loopback address to form that neighborship so that we can always use another path if available to us. Okay. So we have to just make sure that routing is enabled and I'm able to ping the R1 loopback address. Okay. If I'm able to ping the R1 loopback address, then I should be able to form a, a IBGP neighborship between R3 and R1. Okay. It does not have to be a physical connection. Right. So now R1 will also receive from R3. Okay. With what? 5000 slash 8 is path as 300. Once this goes out, AS path will be what? 200 comma 300. It prepends it for 5000 slash 8. Okay. And all of its route attributes. So this is how IBGP needs to have a full mesh topology. Okay. It will only prepend the AS path when it is forwarding the uh, path towards the EBGP router. Okay. And it will only forward to an IBGP router if it has received that path from an eBGP device. If it has received the particular path from the IBGP device, then it will not forward it to any other IBGP device in the network. Okay. Otherwise it will form a loop. Okay. So that's, that's how it works. Okay. So on, in the BGP neighboring table as well, right? It will have that with the, how, how is this path learned? Is it learned from eBGP or it is learned from IBGP? It's learned from IBGP, then it will not forward it to other IBGP peers. If it's learned from EBGP peer, then it will forward it to other IBGP peers. Okay. And the AS path is only prepended only when it is uh, forwarded to uh, forwarded out on EBGP peer. So using these two rules and forming a uh, full mesh topology, we are able to build this entire routing table with all the networks. Okay. So now all of them have the information about 5008. Okay. Now all of them know how to reach the 5008 network. Make sense. Okay. So this is how 800 slash 8 will be also learned. This is how the network behind CE1 will be learned and network behind CE4 will be learned by all the devices. And this is how the entire routing system works. Okay. In today's uh, internet. I hope, I, ho I hope this guy, guys, this made sense to you. Uh, you know, the next video I'll be talking about route reflectors and route orchestration. Okay. Uh, route reflectors is it's route uh, uh, reflectors is basically to avoid this full mesh topology. We'll see how we can avoid the full mesh topology using the um, route reflectors and route confederation. Sorry, it was route confederation. Okay. Now in the next video, we'll talk more about that. And 
so in order to let's say if you have multiple paths right uh, what happens if we have multiple paths the vgp will decide based on the attributes route attributes whichever has the lowest as path sequence will be chosen if the as path has uh, the as path sequence length is same okay then we'll go to probably the local preference if local preference is also same then the order if that is also same then you know we have other route attributes that we can see until we find a tiebreaker okay makes sense that's how we choose the best possible path and the best possible path is the information that is given out uh, to the ebgp devices peers okay we don't want to give them all the possible paths most of the times okay so we generally give them the best possible path only right i hope that makes sense so please um, you know route bgp is a huge protocol uh, there are like a lot of features built on top of it uh, i can you know there are a lot of things you can learn about bgp it's it's a huge routing protocol a lot of features keep getting added every now and then to it uh, i can share a link with you guys uh, there is a youtuber uh who's youtube videos on bgp you can follow it's all in hindi but if you guys want me to like you know make a series on bgp then i can do that as well for you guys uh if you are very interested in learning everything about bgp then go through it if not you know just to have like a common understanding of bgp and just to apply for you know uh a software developer role or soft a network engineer role who just needs to know like you know be able to crack the interview for you know the initial roles initial positions not senior roles so i think this much information should be enough about bgp and this should give you an idea how the routing how this bgp protocol works how ib ibgp and ebgp works so all this information should be more than sufficient uh, but do let me know if you guys if you guys have any questions if you guys have any feedback for me in the comment section please like share and subscribe thank you guys